Well, hello everyone and welcome back. Today I am going to share a recipe with you that um, we use and enjoy and I hope that you will too. We're going to be canning today and we're going to can coleslaw. Now this is a very versatile dish and I feel like you know we're in the right season to be eating coleslaw and the fact that we have it um, prepared and in our cupboards certainly helps us to cut down the amount of time that it takes to prepare a meal and as the days get hot and it's supposed to get to 30 degrees today here in Golden um, the, as the days get hot it just is not as much fun to be in the kitchen cooking so if we've got some of these instant foods that are in our pantry that we only need to open and um, do very little fuss with it stops us i think from hopping in the car and going through a drive through when you just don't want to make your house all hot so come on back and we'll i'll gather up the ingredients and we'll get started on this recipe that i hope can be a blessing to you So I'm just trying at this point to use up some of my leftovers. So I have some cabbage left over from uh, coleslaw that we made fresh a couple of weeks ago. Cabbage keeps quite a long time, but it is getting to that point. And then I have two, you know, smallish heads of cabbage. I'm not even sure how many, how much this all weighs. Um, but I'm gonna work on whatever it is. We also need an onion. This one's pretty big, so I probably won't use all of it. Two carrots. And whether or not you put bell peppers in yours is up to you. Um, but I'm going to add it just for a little contrast and a um, little something different. So where to start, you ask? Well, I think I'm gonna start with the cabbage. And I've got out my husband's handy dandy cleaver and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit because it has been sitting around for a while and if you know anything about cabbage it kind of gets you know discolored around the edges it feels like one of those vegetables that should literally last forever but it doesn't <laughs> unfortunately so I'm just going to peel it back to where it looks good. And I think that's that. And then I really like to have my coleslaw sliced fairly thinly. And that's why I got out the big cleaver. It'll take me some time to work through this, but I really do like this better than running it through the food processor which you know if you've watched any of my videos you know that food processor is my best friend but I like the pieces to be smaller like a smaller shred and uh, so I, I really do like to have the control of doing it this way So this is the time of the year we all get busy and get into outdoor activities and particularly barbecuing when the weather is nice and warm. Today I think is the 2nd of June and the weather has been really warm. And of course after a long winter <laughs> we're happy, really happy to see, see the sun. And just as I said that, I don't know if you noticed on the camera or not, but uh, the sun went behind the cloud. Here we go. It's coming back. So I'm not going to, as we, as we are spending so much time outside and we are doing a lot more barbecuing and outdoor activities like that, it's nice to have some instant or fairly instant recipes in our arsenal. 
where we can just go into our cupboard and pull them out and we know they're going to be consistently the same each time and that we will not have to cook everything. So on the barbecue, you could cook your proteins, um, your meat, whatever kind you're going to cook. And you could have a coleslaw salad from your pantry. And if you have followed along and you've made my dry canned potatoes, which you know you can find on our channel, then you have the basics for a potato salad because they work really well on a potato salad. So I would just pop, you know, a half a dozen eggs into the um, instant pot and I set it for high pressure for six minutes and as soon as that time runs out I do a quick release and then I dump them into a sink full of cold water to just stop the cooking process so you don't get that green around the inside edge and then I peel them and um, get ready to go. So if you were using your Instant Pot and a bottle of your potatoes out of the cupboard, which are already cooled, uh, you could make a potato salad pretty quickly that way and have a, a great meal with very little effort. So I'm not going to keep you here while I cut all of the cabbage, um, but I'm going to be right back when that task is done. Well, <laughs> oh, the things that happened while you were gone. I realized that once I got chopping that I had more cabbage than I had anticipated so I've broken it up into two bowls and I tried to measure it so that I could give you an idea of how much was there and there's about 14 cups of cabbage between these two bowls and um, which is right about the amount that I would normally do and I would say this is probably two medium-sized heads of cabbage because I did have a bit left over here in the bag on the counter um, because I felt like it was getting to be a way bigger batch than I was prepared for so I have sliced it all up oh, I got a couple big pieces in there and I um, made a heck of a mess while I was doing it so I just took a moment to tidy that up and come back and then I realized I hadn't started the camera. So I um, am now in the process of chopping up the onion. I have one large onion in here and I'm just gonna whack it up into uh, pieces. There's lots of fancy ways to do this and you do it the way that you normally do it because I suspect that as far as cutting onions go, there isn't too much that I could um, teach you for tips and tricks and you don't mind if uh, well I hope you don't mind if you do you can correct that for your own slaw if the pieces aren't perfectly even if some of them are a little bigger than others um, I think coleslaw is a pretty rustic dish overall and we don't mind if uh, if it appears to be a little rustic. So I'm going to kind of guesstimate and put about half of the onion in each of my bowls. And then I'm going to move on to this red pepper. They're all going to end up in the same big mush anyway, so <laughs> it uh, really doesn't matter at this point. I don't think I just needed something to hold it all in. And the red pepper, um, you can dice it. I'm just going to slice it. I'm going to try and slice it a bit more finely than I normally would. Because we love to just have chunks. In fact, um, it's taken everything I can muster up not to be eating this as I'm cutting it up. I do love a red pepper. It's also one of my grandson's favorite snacks is red pepper. But 
Ruth's parents have been awesome about, or their parents have been awesome about uh, introducing them to vegetables and and fruit, and their they love their vegetables and fruit, and will most times um, ask for that over you know an unhealthy snack. So I think they've definitely done something right there. So here where I live. We, in Golden, we are uh, slowly opening up. Just this past weekend, um, I guess it's this past week, we were allowed to go and sit in a restaurant for a meal. And that was a treat. My husband took me for a meal and, you know, we didn't really even see anybody we knew, but it didn't really matter because we were just happy to be out of the house and um, doing something that felt more or less normal. We're still, and will for a long time to come, wearing our masks and being very cautious, but yeah, it was sure nice to get out of the house and, and um, just do something a little different. And I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, now that I'm, you know, retired, I am getting a little tired of the bit making meals every day. So it was nice to get out of the house for one meal. It's just nice to have a break sometimes, just so you can catch your breath again, and feel energized. I feel I was starting to feel like. I was repeating the same old dishes, and that's not the kind of cook I am. I do love to create things, and I definitely was not feeling very creative there. So, feeling better now, and happy to be getting back to YouTube and to um, start starting to put things back into my pantry again. At the beginning, when I first retired, there was just so many things that we've been putting off for a long time. You know, when I retire, I'll do this. So there have been cupboards cleaned and corners cleaned and the stove has been pulled out. And you know the routine, like kind of the deep cleaning that if you can put off, you do. I did. We did. So it's nice to be, um, to be kind of getting things back to, to normal. I'm not very good with this grater. I should have my husband here for this because he can run this thing like crazy, but he's not here today. So I am going to have to just suck it up and keep going. It's a beautiful day here today. I hope it is where you are. The sun is shining bright and I am working here in the morning um, because I, by afternoon I suspect my air conditioner will be running and, it'll, and I'll need it. <laughs> and it'll be noisy so I'm trying to take care of this video and this poor cabbage while the sun is still down a bit and the heat level is down. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, looks like about a cup. Hmm, got some snacks for lunch. Now, I think I've got all my ingredients in there. Does that look like a pretty colorful coleslaw? I think this one's going to be harder to mix. Well, I'll mix this one first. Just gonna kind of mix all the ingredients together. And then I'm gonna mix this for a while. And then I wanna make sure that there's not a lot of moisture in this cabbage. So I'm going to put some salt into this bowl, each bowl. And I'm going to leave it for an hour and get out as much of the moisture as I can. 
because we don't need to dilute our pickling liquid when we're when we're working on it. So I'm going to add the salt and then I'm going to transfer some to that bowl. So I need a one tablespoon of salt for each bowl. I would say 14 cups of cabbage. Uh, yeah, so if I divide it in half, seven and uh, yeah, one tablespoon of salt. Now we're going to rinse this off at the end. So don't let that frighten you. Um, the salt content won't be that high. And I'm using kosher salt for this. Um, there are Puritans out there that would say, oh no, we use pickling salt, but I am not worried. The reason that they use pickling salt is that um, it keeps the liquid clearer. And I'm not worried about that being a, a problem for me because I am going to rinse it all off anyway. So now I'm just gonna give it one more massage here. And then I'm gonna cover these bowls with a towel. And we will move on to the brine that's gonna cover this. Oh, I can already feel a difference in it just with the salt in it. Um, we're gonna move on to the brine that's going to be um, introduced to this here in a little bit. I'll be back in a moment. Here I am preparing now to make the brine that's going to um, go over this coleslaw. And it's just a few simple ingredients actually, but the reason that I'm starting it right now when I've just set the coleslaw aside is that we need it to cool uh, before, or you know, definitely come down in temperature before we, we put it over the cabbage. So I am going to start this off with three cups of vinegar and you want to make sure that your vinegar is um, only 5% uh, acidic acid because if you were to go higher than that it's not good for you to consume and it's now becoming, cleaning vinegar is becoming more popular on the grocery store um, shelves since people discovered it has so much value and it's easy to mix it up. So just be cautious that you have the right vinegar. I'm gonna go with three. I've got a lot of cabbage in there, so I may, hopefully I'm gonna have enough. And then I'm gonna add two cups of water right from the tap. Yeah, no, I think I'll add another half a cup of vinegar. There we go. Three and a half cups of vinegar. I'll put the, the, the uh, recipe for this in the description box uh, below the video so that you'll be able to uh, keep up with my madness here, here as I go along. Kind of um, creating like a nutty professor or something. So... Mustard seed, one tablespoon, goes in. You can be a little more generous with this if that's your desire. Same with celery seed. Now the interesting part about making coleslaw like this is that when you open up the jar, you can decide whether or not you're just going to eat it in the pickle version and if that's not what you're after you can rinse it in your colander which will take off um, the brine or most of the brine not all of it but most of it and then you can carry on as if it were a fresh one so you can add your um, miracle whip or mayonnaise dressing to it or just you know if if you're trying to keep things simple a bottle of coleslaw dressing from the grocery store would do it just as well. So um, there's a couple of different ways you can use this in, as an end result. I'm making a lot of racket. And now I'm going to add to this three and a half cups of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. Um, so if you're concerned about that, 
there are a couple of options, um, and I'm going to try some of them here in the near future, but I know that Stevia holds up well to, to cooking, so it might definitely be an option for um, canning and cooking in the future. But for the moment, I'm going to do it the way I've always done it. So, here we go. I'm just going to transfer this to the stove. This is not going to be exciting, so I'm going to transfer it to the stove. I'm going to bring it up to the point where the sugar has dissolved, and then I'm going to take it off the heat and let it cool. And at this point, I start um, timing my one hour of uh, time for my coleslaw. So I'll see you in a moment. Well, here I am back. It's been an hour. I've poured the pickling uh, mixture over top of the cabbage and I've stirred it up good. And now I'm just gonna start to pack it into clean, sterilized jars. I prefer to use wide mouth jars for almost everything. I just find it's easier to um, get the product in and out of the jars. Although I do have a fair share of smaller size openings as well. This is a messy process because there are so many little bits and it seems they all want to stick to you. And we're going to pack them in there pretty good. Not, we're not jamming them in, but we are going to pack it in there pretty darn good. The pickling mixture is in the bowl and so once I've get, gotten the jars filled and I will clean those after, um, once I've got the jars filled then I will put the pickling mixture into a measuring cup and pour it off into the jars. So I don't know how many um, jars this is going to make. It's always kind of a crap shoot. It's okay to say that. Um, we sometimes the cabbage, if it's a little drier, it doesn't let off as much juice as you think it's going to. Oh, excuse me, there's my beeper. Well, I was close to the dozen. I got 11 jars and had the perfect amount of brine left over. I think I had maybe an eighth of a cup. So that, that was pretty close. I have boiled my seals because, ooh, because these are only going to be water bathed for, I felt a little tight, water bathed for 10 minutes and I believe the rule is that if you are going to be water bathing or canning for longer than 10 minutes you don't have to boil your lids but if I am going to be only 10 minutes better to be on the safe side I think and uh, make sure that the seals in good shape and ready for the process. I have my hot water canner on the stove. It's over here, oh, maybe out of your view, but it's hot and ready for me to go. I've just brought it up to hot, not boiling, because I don't want to risk cracking or any of my jars inside there. You can see how colorful this is. It's a really colorful recipe for sure. And everything in front of me right now is kind of sticky. That is a lot of sugar, I guess, for to be divided out between 12 jars. And it is a tad sweet, I would say. So if you, you know, maybe don't like it as sweet, you could cut back the sugar. Um, because I don't believe the sugar adds anything to the canning process so you know keep that in mind sugar probably is going to make a difference but 
we do like it a little sweet. So that's what we go for. So there you go. I've got 11 jars ready to go into the canner um, from a couple of hours of staying on task this morning when I had the opportunity. So I hope that you've enjoyed coming along today and that if you have, you will consider subscribing if you haven't already and that you would share this video with your friends and that would be really great. Um, hit the little subscribe bell with a little bell so you get notified when there's a new one and give it a thumbs up like us please and i will continue to bring you uh, new content um, on a weekly basis and i will see you next time take care everybody bye bye